Celebrating 30 years of phenomenal trend forecasting, five times a week, Monday through Friday. Here's Gerald Salenti with today's trends in the news. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's Friday, February 22nd, 2019. And here are some of today's trends in the news. Over there in Asia, only Nikkei's down a little bit. Over there in Europe, everybody's up. Up here in the States, oil, boop, mixed. Gold's up a little bit, and so is Bitcoin. So what's going on? How come the markets are up? Well, read your trend alert. Your trend alert. The Trump bump. Market growth, no recession. That's right. We did a 180. Well, when the Fed did a U-turn, so too did we. Because we were counting on what they were saying. And they backtracked under Trump pressure. No doubt about it. Here, listen to some of the quotes. Unfortunately, they just raised rates, said Trump. I'm not happy about that, he said later on. I'm very unhappy with the Fed, he said after that one. The only problem our economy has is the Fed, he said. The Fed is foolish to keep raising rates. I think the Fed has gone crazy and is going loco. I think the Fed right now is a much bigger problem than China. I'm worried about the fact that they seem to like raising interest rates. To me, the Fed is the biggest risk. On and on and on. Powell, he did a U-turn on the pressure from Trump. Same thing happened over there in India. That's right. Cat running for re-election over there. Modi, the prime minister, brought in a new Fed cat and down went the interest rates. Same thing in the U.S. They buckled on the pressure. So, what's going to happen? That's why we changed our forecast. We don't see a recession coming in. The 2020 elections are coming up, and they're going to do everything they can to boost the economy. So, hey, if the Fed raised interest rates nine times since 2015... They could lower them nine times again. So, yes, there's a global slowdown to some extent, but we don't see a recession at this level. I want to make this very clear. Minus a wild card. No one could predict the future. There were too many wild cards. Hey, how about playing the Trump card? You want to see a wild card? And then there's the ones man-made and by Mother Nature. Up. Oh, I got to be proper. Women na- made and made by Father Nature. I don't want me too going after me. So anyway, no one could predict the future. There are wild cards. Another wild card, a war in the Middle East heating up. Another wild card, what may happen down in Venezuela. And wilder, wilder cards that nobody knows. Hey, remember in 9-11? So, moving on. Dow rises more than 150 points. Nine-week winning streak. Stocks rose on Friday as another round of trade talks between U.S. and China wrapped up with investors increasingly more hopeful a deal will be struck. We've been saying from the beginning it has nothing to do. There is no trade war. The tariffs are minor. They count for 0.6% of the Chinese GDP. There's a global slowdown. What's boosting the market is cheap money. End of story. So what's going to happen? Start looking at earnings. That's what's going to really happen. But again, the global economy will continue to rise as they inject more cheap money, monetary methadone, to keep those bulls running. And what else do we have here? Uh, Gold heads for second weekly gains. The market is expecting the dollar to weaken, they say. Well, the dollar's down 0.16% for six major currencies on Friday. So, minutes of the Fed Reserve came out. And they painted a less dovish picture than expected on future interest rate hikes. And higher rates decreases people's interest in holding non-yielding 
bullion. So, now, will the dollar go down? Eh, maybe not, because they're all going to start lowering interest rates and injecting more money in, as I said. So, oil rises 3% this week on OPEC supply cuts and U.S.-China trade hopes. Again, China is slowing down. They had their worst GDP numbers in 30 years, worst year car sales decline, the decline number in 30 years. It has nothing to do with trade wars. It has to do with the slowing down of the economy, economic fundamentals. They wasted too much money boosting the economy that didn't go far enough into the pockets of most of the people and it was falsely built up and now they have to try to regenerate strength. So again, as we're looking at this whole situation now, it's not about a trade deal. And you watch, a trade deal is going to be made. We've been saying that from the beginning. And you'll see it won't make a big difference in the marketplace. Short term it will, long term it won't. Also, surging U.S. crude oil production is partly offsetting OPEC cuts. The OPEC cut 1.2 million barrels per day. But U.S. crude production is hitting 13 million barrels per day by year end, and that's going to offset the OPEC cuts. So the analysis is that where you see oil now, again, minus a wild card, is the range it's going to be in, five ten dollars range. Venezuela oil supply hits multi-year high. Stockpiles are their highest in at least five years as sanctions keep a lid on sales. Isn't that nice? Economic warfare against the people. Sanctions. They're sending $20 million in food for those poor Venezuelans as we're giving them the shaft and making life really difficult for them. Oh, and they're all the Democrats out there running for office, lockjaw on the wars going on. Oh, Bernie came out. We give you free education. We give you free health care. You buy two conditions, you get one free. What a bunch of... Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horse shit. It's Bernie's shit. What a bunch of crap that guy throws out. You know what he's saying? Well, we shouldn't do anything with Venezuela, but they should have another election. Who the hell are you to tell me I should have another election? Oh, Bernie, the guy who's bringing those F-35s into the Burlington Air Force Airport? Oh, that Bernie? The Bernie that voted for the destruction of Iraq under the Clinton administration? That little lowlife Bernie? One little lie after another than that phony. Anyway, that's Venezuela. And what else do we have over here? Ah, tax law helps boost bank profits to record. The tax overhaul signed into law into 2017 has proved a boon to banks. Isn't that great? More dough for the big banks. And we said it from the beginning, and now it's coming out. Again, you know that we were among the first to say it, that these tax cuts would only enrich the rich. The tax policy center said it. 82% of the tax cuts benefited the 1%. And what else did they do? The buybacks, remember that? Again, we said that would happen. We said that before anybody else because all we did was we went back and looked when little Georgie Bush did that back in 2005, 2006. 95% of the money went into stock buybacks, the, the tax breaks. Buybacks could be on way to another record by one count, buybacks are on their way to another record this year, potentially topping the just over one trillion seen in 2018. Chinese hold sway at East African port as Beijing looks to control trade routes. State-owned operator moves in on Djibouti. State-owned operator. That's right. Hey, remember when we were taught to fight those commies? Vietnam War, Korean War, you can't trust those commies. Uh, 
state owned. As I say, the business of China is business. The business of America is war. State owned Chinese merchants and Costco shipping holdings have invested in European and African ports. And here's just some of the places Greece, Belgium, Turkey, Spain, Morocco, France, Spain, Italy, Netherlands, Belgium, France, France, Egypt, Morocco. But the United States, we got uh, 800 bases in about 70 countries. The business of China is business. The business of America is war. Trump eases off hardline deadline for China tariffs. Trump softer rhetoric, rhetoric on Huawei raises hopes of China trade accord. President opposed to blocking out 5G. 5G. Isn't that wonderful? Nobody talks about that. Yeah, 5G. Whew. Those radio frequency, radioactive waves. Whew. They're going to fry a lot of people. But we've been writing about that, but not a lot of people are. Go back to your Trends Journal. The 5G gamble, another wireless advance, another risk to your health. But why talk about that? Existing home sales fell 1.2% in January. Again, we believe they're going to boost those sales up because you're going to start seeing interest rates fall. I've been saying that now for the better part of a year, that when the markets went down too much, they're going to lower interest rates, and that's what they're doing. I'm talking about real estate. West Coast real estate is now so expensive that married couples are moving in with Multiple roommates. Isn't that nice? You think marriage is tough by itself? Bring in some roommates. It'll be great. All right, what else do we have here? Uh, with agreement on taxes, New Jersey moves closer to legal marijuana. What a bunch of crap. The criminals that criminalized it are now decriminalized it, and we want your cut. We want our cut. You got it? We'll tell you what to do with it. And by the way, you can't grow it. We're the jerks. We're the little low lives that took God's plant and we put a tax on it. Yeah, I say cucumbers are next. $42 an ounce tax. What a bunch of... Warning, warning, bullshit alert. There should be an outrage across the country. The lives, the millions of lives that have been ruined by these slimy low-life politicians putting people in jail for getting high. And now we're making money on it. It's okay. And the tens of millions of people they ruined. And probably when you add up the families that have been destroyed over the decades, probably the hundreds of millions. And now these little criminals are decriminalizing Where's the fight? You know, one of the things I said, but what can we do? We can't do anything. And people say, there's a story in here in the New York Times, the toilet paper of record, from an invisible girl to an outspoken climate crusader. This young girl from Sweden, Greta Thunberg, 16 years old. And here's a quote. It's sometimes annoying when people say, oh, you children, you young people are the hope. You will save the world, she said, after several grown-ups had told her just that. Quote, I think it would be helpful if you could help us just a little bit. I hear that bullshit all the time. And we're going to leave it to the young because we're a bunch of low-life, sloppy cowards that have cojones smaller than mothballs and we can't fight. We take bullshit from jerks. I have to be proper. Wankers. I could use a lot of other words. How could you look up to a Cuomo, a McConnell, a Pelosi, a Schumer, a Trump, an Obama, a Clinton? One jerk off after another telling us what to do with our lives. Oh, the children will save us. What happened to statesmen? What happened to the elders? 
No fight in this country. We got the presidential reality show coming up. And what a freak show it is. When I was a kid, they had the Ringling Brothers and Bonham and Bailey Circus. It was the greatest show on earth. They're out of business. That's right. Now it's the greatest freak show on earth. Don't forget to tune in. This is Gerald Salenti, and that's some of today's trends in the news.